So this is a top down view of a scene. So this is your uh, viewer or your virtual camera. And these are all the objects in the scene. So this is the field of view or how much you can see through your eyes. And the dark lines, if you can see on the screen, so these are the only things that your camera will be able to see. The rest, everything will be occluded and not seen if you click an image from there. So this is so determining what surface that you want to show in the scene is also a hard problem. And there are many different algorithms which you might uh, have heard or will hear uh, as a course progresses. So you have a Z buffer, a scanline algorithm and all those. So yeah, don't worry about what these algorithms mean, but this is just to throw out different terms that if you encounter these, you'll know what these terms uh, will mean. So what are the real real world phenomena that we want to capture or we want to uh, simulate? So we want to have like surface detail. So if there is a very detailed object in which it has a lot of things on it, you want to capture that. You want to capture shadows in the scene, obviously. So there is transparency, refractions, because you have different kind of objects. Let's say you're looking through water or looking through glass. Then there are inter-object reflections, which means that objects can reflect onto each other. For example, a mirror can reflect everything perfectly. But if you look at like a very shiny object, it will reflect like a spoon or a plate, a steel plate. It will it will reflect something, right? That is inter-object reflection and so on. So capturing all these effects may be very computationally expensive, but it means that it takes a lot of computer, uh, computer time and power to generate all these effects, and it may, might not be possible for all algorithms to do it. So there are different algorithms which are devised to capture at least some of these effects. And we, I'll quickly talk about these in the next slide. First is a scan conversion. So what does that mean? So what it means that now you want uh, 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 now you want to color the pixels of your 2D image, right? So for each pixel, you you will determine that what object in the scene that you want to shade. And you you just go by each pixel one at a time and you will color something out of it. So for example, this is a, a rendered image which is through scan conversion. So you can see that it does not look very real. Like the spoon here, there are no shadows and it does not look very real, right? So there is there are uh, other methods such as ray tracing. So so okay. So in this image, what it would be is the inter object reflection. So the spoon does not reflect anything, and there is no shining and no gleaming. So ray tracing can be used to generate these effects. For example, uh, like in, in real world, what happens is light comes fall onto an object and it falls onto the eye. So ray tracing is a inverse process of doing that. So for example, this is your virtual camera and this is the image that you want to generate. So instead of light rays coming to your eye, you do the opposite. You shoot rays from the image and see what object do, do, do those rays hit. And when you find that object, you see that, okay, what is the lighting coming from the light source from that object? And then you determine what color is that and you, color, and you put it on your pixel in this image right here. And using this, you can generate an image something like this. So here you can already see that this image looks much more real than this one. Like you can have some soft, uh, soft shadows. Your spoon is reflecting everything, and there is a small highlight on the glass. And this teapot, it can reflect the environment in the scene. Uh, so, uh, so ray tracing can capture many uh, interesting interreflections and uh, images. So there is a next algorithm called radiosity. So, so radiosity is valid only for diffuse surfaces, which means that they, they do not shine or they do not reflect light uh, as in like mirrors. So there is something, an effect called color bleeding, which even ray tracing cannot produce. So let's look at this image. So this is like a, a box with red and green wall, and there is some light on the top, and there are two boxes kept here. So what you can see is that this box right here, 
it has the reddish reflection from the wall. So this is what we call color bleeding. That because this light uh, touch, uh, touches the wall and the light gets reflected back, so it carries some of the color of the wall. So you definitely you will see that in the real world if you have a like, really colored wall or really colored paper, and if you uh, put it close to some like white paper, you will see some uh, color on uh, due to the reflected light. And again, from this, you can see green shadows and green uh, color on this box. So this is called color bleeding, and the radiosity is uh, an algorithm which can generate these kind of effects. So you can already see that this image looks really very real already. But the uh, the downside is that there are no reflections or shininess in the field, which means that if I place a shiny object such as a ball or a mirror, uh, radiosity won't be able to uh, capture that. So there is a uh, another algorithm called photon. Sorry, it's called photon mapping. It's there is an N missing here. So which means that it tries to simulate the actual physics of the light, and it can capture many effects such as caustic. So what are caustic? So if you look at this image, you see that there is a very shiny translucent ball kept here, and there is a, like a uh, like a small uh, white ref refraction of this light. So this effect is called caustic. And even radiosity, ray tracing, none of these effects can generate, uh, none of these algorithms can generate this effect. Uh, so, so you can see that it can uh, work with diffuse surfaces, very shiny reflective and refractive translucent surfaces. So the general algorithm is that you shoot light rays from the light source in the scene and you deposit photons on the objects. That is, you determine where all the light rays hit, and you say that, okay, these are the photons there on the object. And then you uh, gather the, this photon information and produce an image. And uh, obviously, this description won't be enough to justify the algorithm or to explain the algorithm, but this is the general idea. So you get the idea that there are different algorithms for different kind of effects that you want to generate in the scene. Now let's talk about animation. So we have already looked up how to model different objects and how to model lighting and reflections and uh, refraction. Now let's see how we actually, how these objects can move in the scene or how can we make them move. So keyframing. So keyframing is like one of the most traditional techniques and still very widely used in movies or games. So what does that mean? Basically, artists draw some frames in time, which means that they uh, they draw a certain position of the object in time. Okay, uh, uh, hello. Uh, just, just, just can I just wait? Sometimes they cannot hear anything. Uh, just, I'm just fixing that. Okay, just, just one second. I'll restart, uh, restart the Skype again, okay? I'll restart the call. Okay. Hello, online phone. Hello? Yeah, yeah, can, can you hear? Okay, go ahead, go ahead. Sorry, you can go ahead now. Okay, so let me uh, re uh, start this again. So I was talking about animation technique. So, so far we have seen that how to model the geometry of an object and how to model the surface properties, the light in the scene. Now we want to look at how these objects can move in time or how uh, how can we see the motion or how can we generate the motion for these objects. So keyframing is like one of the most popular and the most uh, traditional techniques used in computer graphics to generate uh, motion. So for example, like Tom and Jerry cartoons and all these animated things, they rely heavily on keyframing. 